Okay, so the first step of doing the electrical and the uh, the air lines is to remove the cover on the side of the Z-axis, the Z-axis cover plate here. Uh, there's four screws right here. This is on the left side of the mill here. Once that's removed, take the uh, the blue wires from the control box here and uh, fish them down that way. I'm going to tape up the ends here so that the, the two wires stay together. A little tip on using electrical tape for wires, taping the ends like this, is to leave a little flag on it. Basically, you wrap the uh, tape around it, and instead of just wrapping the tape all the way around it, like this, and then you can't find the end and it's hard to take it back off, what you do is you just uh, leave it long and then you bend it over on top of the uh, on top of the uh, the tape itself like this and then when you want to take it off all you do is pull on this and, and undo it so okay I've got the uh, wires fished down there next step is going to be re to remove this cover plate in the back so you can pull the wires down through uh, there's a transformer mounted to this back to this cover I think so okay I've got the uh, the transformer removed with the uh, the cover with the transformer on it and I reached up inside through here and uh, grabbed the blue wires and then pulled them out. It says to feed these wires through into the control box and then hook them up. I don't know, these wires are don't seem like they're long enough to do that the way it is now. It seems to me the easiest thing to do at this point would be to uh, put this control box. Uh, it's kind of cool I cool idea. Basically, you don't put the old cover plate back and the, uh, the control box is actually the cover plate, so it just mounts right on there, so... Alright, I'll do that next. Okay, I got the uh, control box mounted up here. The, uh, the holes didn't quite align here. I got two screws in the top here, but the, uh, the bottom ones... Uh, I'm probably going to have to make the holes a little larger, enlarge the holes so the screws fit. It's actually pretty secure, just like that. It's not moving at all, but... As I got plenty of slack on this now, so I can bring this into the control box. Okay, I got the uh, transformer and the cover replaced on the back. Got the wires pulled through here. That was like super easy. Um, and fishing the wires down and bringing it out to here took, you know, maybe a total of five minutes. So really simple, especially when you have access to the. Uh, to this rear plate right here. You know, if you've got an enclosure with the backsplash on it, it might make it uh, trickier, but... All right, next thing to do is to uh, hook these wires up. Okay, at this point, while messing with the, or working with the wires inside the control cabinet, I decided to actually unplug the machine. I don't remember it saying to unplug the machine early in the instructions. It may have, and I just missed it, but if you don't unplug the machine, then you're gonna have uh, live wires coming in right here, so. Okay, so basically what you do is, uh, we're doing uh, the number that's uh, labeled uh, 105. So basically you just uh, find 105 and just, uh, just push that in there and the uh, wire should uh, pop right out like that. Uh, I had to cut the cable tie, the zip tie, on here uh, to be able to get enough slack on it because it has to be moved up to the top over here. Okay, so the first step was to remove uh, 105 off the bottom down here, not the top, off the bottom. And the next step would be to renumber this, uh, put a 105A on this. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, we're he here you can see where it says step one, disconnect the red wire, relabel 105 to 105A, then it says to basically take that wire and stick it up on top. Now if you were to take this literally and move it over one, two, three spots, it would be under number four. So I think they're just talking about putting it in a uh, an empty space up above, which I'm gonna put in uh, two spaces over. Which is right here. Uh, getting the screwdriver in this one was a little more difficult, but 
I'm going to go ahead and stick that in there. And then once you have that fully inserted, just uh, pull the screwdriver out and it will stay in there. Okay, so the next step is basically just to take these two blue wires and they're both labeled 105 and 105A. It's a lot hard to focus on these, you know. 105, 105A, and basically just matching those up to 105 and 105A. Uh, really pretty simple, so. Of course, these come with terminals that are usually made for uh, screw blocks. Probably just gonna cut these off. I don't know if they you can bend these over and stick them in there or what, but I think I'm just gonna cut these off, twist the wires, and then stick them in. They've got special terminals on these other ones that are designed for this kind of thing, but the stickers were kind of uh, close to uh, where those terminals were, so I just uh, unpeeled them, moved them down, and uh, stuck them back on and uh, stripped the wires like this. Okay, and there's the final connection there. Uh, kind of hard to see the 105, but 105 is uh, right there. And that's lined up with the uh, 105 uh, that we just ran down. And of course your 105A is lined up with the 105A from the uh, power draw bar. So I guess it's just a matter of putting this circuit from the power draw bar in series with this circuit from the, uh, the door switch here. So it must be kind of some kind of interlock or something. Okay, for the next step, you're probably gonna wanna lower the head unless you have lots of room in your shop and lots of clearance height. Um, you don't want to, that's basically time to mount this thing to here. So I guess I'm supposed to put this over here like this, mark the hole, uh, drill through it, and put a uh, screw on there to mount this onto here. Of course, this is a lot easier to drill if you uh, swing the, the cylinder out of the way. Also, I figured I may want to mark your hole a little further down from the top so you're not drilling into this cross piece right here. So, I don't know, I marked mine now about an inch, uh, about a half an inch, five eighths of an inch down. Okay, I got it screwed on there uh, with the provided uh, hardware. Now I'm gonna raise the head back up so I can uh, get a screwdriver on the back side of this so I can tighten it down. Okay, then they say to mount this little uh, zip tie clamp deal right here using a sheet metal screw. Uh, they provide a screw, but I think I'm just gonna use a uh, tech screw, self-driving screw, so I don't have to drill it. So I'll just put that in right there. Probably easier to just pull this off quickly in order to do that. Okay, I got the strap in there, zip tied it. Uh, now I just need to attach this to the front over here and connect the uh, the airlines, which are labeled top and bottom, so that's pretty simple. Okay, I cleaned behind this and uh, stuck it on there with the uh, double-sided tape that's already on it. Went and uh, hooked up the hoses, the top and the bottom. Uh, I guess there has to be some slack on these because, so this door can open and close and this can, this whole thing can hinge out, so the, uh, the belt can be uh, changed, replaced, so. Okay, the next part is to uh, put one of these on here, in right here. They don't, uh, they don't actually provide it, so luckily I had one in a drawer from some other project. I don't know, it could have been from uh, the pallet or something like that, but, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here. It looks like it may be a little tight to get in there, but I actually found that uh, a matching socket the 9 16 fits this perfectly so we're going to put this in with the socket all right okay so the next step is going to be to install this uh filter regulator and lubricator thing here it came with these reducers here brass reducers but since i was going to have to go and get these push-in deals anyways i just decided to go with the uh quarter inch push-in by three inch uh, three-eighths 
uh, MIP mail iron pipe. So I can just put those directly in like that. So I got those two. I've got a, um, a T, which I'll use to uh, intercept the, uh, the line that's coming up to, to intercept the line that's coming up to the uh, fog buster here. Okay, I got it all mounted. Got the two pieces in here uh, with Teflon tape. Put this on with Teflon tape. Mounted really easy, uh, as long as you have like a long uh, drill. Well, I've got a one of these extender deals here. So that was real. Some of these you have to like take it apart, put the bracket on and stuff, but this was super simple to mount. Next thing I need to do is run the line from here, uh, T on to this here, and then run a line from here over to here. Okay, I got the uh, airline run, uh, teed off of here, came up into here, out of there, put it through the strap here, and then there. And uh, next step is to uh, get power to the system. I just got a short extension cord. Uh, one thing I noticed is I'm having problems with uh, this hose kinking when the door is closed. So I got to figure out what to do about that, how to reroute it. I can't really shorten it because, because you need to be able to pivot this out. You pivot this out. I mean, it's just got just barely enough line as it is right now. So I'll have to figure that out. Okay, so a word about adjusting how fast the uh, cylinder goes up and down. Uh, when I first had it, uh, when I was first using it, the uh, the cylinder was actually going back up really slowly. It was taking forever for it to clamp onto the uh, TTS holder. Uh, what I found out is that when air is applied to the bottom uh, to release it, to push the cylinder back up, uh, there's actually pressure in the top portion of the cylinder still. There's like two portions in the cylinder. There's the top and the bottom portion of the cylinder. So there's a, there's actually a valve to release this air back out of the cylinders in order to allow this to push the cylinder back up. Uh, and I had that completely closed, which is why I wasn't going back up. So the... Uh, so the one that you actually have to adjust for that case is actually the top. For the bottom to go up faster, you have to adjust the, uh, the exhaust out of the top, which is this one right here. So by backing this off a little bit, the, the pressure from the air, you know, when it's pushing up, will come back through here, I guess an exhaust out through here. And I guess the uh, vice versa would be the same for going down, for the cylinder going down. If you want to go down faster, you would then adjust this one. Of course, I noticed on here, there are no seals on the bottom of the cylinder. Um, I don't know, maybe the air is just coming out of here. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but I'll have to see if I'm supposed to put plugs in those. Okay, now I'm going to do the uh, what's called the preloading of the springs of the power draw bar. Actually, it's uh, pretty simple. Uh, I suggest to put a uh, tool holder in here that's empty. I guess so if it drops, you don't break anything. So I've done that. The next thing is basically to just tighten up the power draw bar to the tension you normally would if you didn't have the power draw bar on here. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so the next step would be then to start using the uh, use the release button and see if the uh, tool comes out, you know, holding it as you push the button so it doesn't fall. And if it does that, then go on to the next step, which is to continue to make quarter inch incremental turns as long as it continues to uh, come out on you. If you've... Uh, adjusted it a quarter turn and won't come out anymore, then you've gone too far and you need to back it up. If at first it doesn't release uh, from when you preloaded it before, 
then uh, then you need to back it off because you've tightened it down too much. Okay, so I finished adjusting the preload. I basically just kept tightening uh, this up uh, until the uh, this didn't uh, the tool holder didn't come out anymore. And then backed it off, order of a turn. This is what the uh, washers look like uh, at that setting. Uh, they don't actually they're they're squished down pretty good, so the uh, power draw bar doesn't actually push down too much to release it. So okay, well that's all uh, that's all adjusted now. So um, with this kink here, I don't know. I'm kind of twisting it out this way. I don't know. I may have to replace this hose or maybe put a coupling right here. Uh, I'm not sure. It might be easier just to put a coupling right there. Just cut it and put a coupling. So. All right.